This program shows how a specific nucleic acid in a clinical sample can be detected and quantified using PCR. This is accomplished by detecting the accumulation of the amplified PCR products as they are generated in the reaction. And so the process is called real-time or RT-PCR. To understand how amplified PCR products, also called amplicons, are detected in real time, let's first review the events that occur during a normal cycle of the PCR reaction. Recall that the first step in any PCR cycle is to raise the reaction temperature and melt double-stranded DNA. Then, when the temperature is lowered, the specific primers bind to the sequences at each end of the target DNA. The intervening DNA can then be synthesized by polymerase reaction in opposite directions. As a result, you produce two double-strand copies of the target DNA when you started with only one. If you have any confusion about this basic process, it might be a good idea to review the program on basic PCR once again. To detect the generation of new amplicons in real time, the PCR reaction requires an additional ingredient, a single-stranded DNA probe designed to hybridize to the part of the DNA sequence synthesized between the two primers. However, unlike the primers, this probe is modified in a special way. One of its nucleotides is labeled covalently with a fluorescent molecule, and another nucleotide is labeled with a fluorescence quenching molecule. The quencher rapidly absorbs any light energy emitted by the fluorescence molecule as long as it remains in close proximity. Now, let's look at what happens when this additional ingredient is present during a single cycle of PCR. As the primers bind to the separated strands of DNA, the probe also finds its complementary sites between them. The enzyme that synthesizes new DNA from the ends of the primers also has a second activity, an exonuclease activity. So when it encounters double-stranded DNA in its path, it will disassemble the strand that is in its way and replace all of the nucleotides. As the polymerase cuts through the probe, note that the nucleotide bearing the fluorescent marker and the one bearing the quencher are separated from one another. In the absence of a nearby quencher, the fluorescent molecule can now emit detectable light when stimulated. Each time another amplicon is produced, another fluorescent marker is released from its neighboring quencher. Therefore, just as the number of amplicons doubles in each PCR cycle, the amount of emitted fluorescent energy also doubles. This light generation can be monitored during the PCR reaction in a thermocycler that is equipped with a fluorometer. So, if you begin with a clinical sample that had only one copy of the target DNA, it could take 40 or more cycles before the amplicons are detected by a fluorometer in a specialized thermocycle. However, if the original sample contained 32 times more copies of the target DNA, then the fluorometric detection would occur after five fewer rounds of PCR. And if there were 1,024 more target DNA sequences in the original sample, then the fluorescence signal will be detected 10 rounds earlier. So, the amount of specific DNA in the clinical sample is determined by reference to the round of PCR in which the amount of fluorescence first crosses the threshold of detection. 
RT-PCR is most commonly used to quantify the burden of viruses in the blood of patients with HIV, hepatitis B, and other viruses. But HIV is an RNA virus. It has no DNA, and the RNA that it possesses is single-stranded. So, how can this method work? The answer is that RNA from an RNA virus can be quantified after it has been copied and converted to double-stranded DNA. This animation shows how this is accomplished. First, the viral RNA is released from the virus. Then, a complementary DNA strand is synthesized from the viral RNA using purified reverse transcriptase, just as it does in natural HIV replication. In some protocols, a specialized RNA enzyme is then added to nick the RNA and allow it to be degraded. Whether or not this is part of the procedure, the next key step occurs when a DNA polymerase and a primer generate a complementary DNA strand, just as in the PCR reaction. At the end of this reaction, a single strand of viral RNA has been converted to a double-stranded DNA that has the same sequence of nucleotide bases. The quantitative PCR reaction can proceed as described previously.